Hi church, it's Pastor Will. Hope you're doing well. You know, I'm the, the guy in our family uh, who is the designated shopper during this uh, COVID-19 crisis. And yesterday I had to make a trip to the grocery store. And as I walked around the store, this time more than ever, I kind of noticed that behavior was changing a bit. From week to week, it's it's been different, but this week was different. The first week I went, like you might know, it was frantic. It was crazy. The second week was, was busy, but a little bit more focused. People were just there on a mission. The third week, it felt more somber and subdued, whereas the fourth week was a little bit more mechanical, but with a sense of melancholy in the air. But like I said, this week was, was different. It was less busy. It was less hectic overall, but I could sense a little bit more anger in the air. I'm not sure if you've you've shopped this week, but for me, at least, I, there was a little bit more anger, a little bit more frustration, a little bit more dissatisfaction with, with what was going on. It seemed to me that people are tired. People are, are weary. People, in a sense, are, are losing a little bit of, of hope. They can't see the future in front of them. The lack of answers and the lack of, of foresight is essentially grinding people thin. And as the quarantine continues on, more and more people may become aggravated, may become upset, and start living with more and more fear and feel more and more desperate. As things continue forward, people might start acting in ways that they've never acted prior. In the Bible, Paul is addressing a church that is frustrated as well, a church that is looking uh, for answers. And in Corinth, they're dealing with a lot of cultural issues that they want Paul to address for them clearly. They look at him as, as a spiritual leader, as the leader in the church, and they want definite answers on certain things. They want to know uh, what the future looks like in certain cultural areas. The fact is, though, much like COVID-19 and much like these cultural issues that Paul was dealing with, some issues just don't have clear solutions. Some issues are messy. Some issues are, are complicated. And Paul suggests that these issues of should or should not that he's dealing with, uh, there's a tension there. And we have to live in that tension. The tension of grace and truth. So within this COVID conversation that we're having, two big groups seem to be forming if you look around, if you watch the news, if you check social media. And both of those groups both have elements of truth mixed into what they believe in. So as a Christian and as a pastor, I want simplicity across the board. I want to be able to have a blanket answer that just solves problems and helps every single person out who's listening. But I simply can't find that, at least in this situation. We live in complexity. We live in a complex culture that, that pressures people to have the right answer, to have the, the solution right there on their lips and that they expect people, whether it's me or, or, or even you or the news or wherever, to have clear and culturally sensitive, accurate declarations about what to do with these issues. But like I mentioned before in, in Paul's dealings with, with Corinth, Paul says that, you know what, this situation is not that simple, but he gives us something that although not simple, is very insightful. Let me read from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 19 through 23. Though I am free and belong to no one, I have made myself a slave to everyone, to win as many as possible. To the Jews, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law, Though I am not free from God's law, but I am under Christ's law, so as to win those not having the law. To the weak I became weak, to win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that by all possible means I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel, that I may share in its blessings. You know, right now, our country, you could say, is divided. And it will only get worse as time goes on. 
Although some of this behavior that we see maybe on, on the news certainly needs correction, as Christians and as the church, I think we need to be careful. We need to be careful about how we approach situations, especially how we approach individual human beings, always exhibiting grace and truth in our interactions. Now, sometimes the issues that we are confronting pull us more towards the grace side of things. We need to lean a little bit more on God's wisdom, on God's understanding. We need to practice patience. We need to provide an un ending willingness to offer up forgiveness even in the midst of things that might hurt us. Yet at other times there are answers out there that we need to provide that are strictly truth, concrete answers, irrefutable realities about situations. But sometimes if we're not careful and we might lean on our own selfish desire sometimes we can find ourselves living exclusively in either grace or truth. We, we, we allow the or to get in there, and living exclusively on one side or the other is not always helpful. It's certainly not helpful to, to certain groups, depending on how we're interacting with them. It doesn't help others, and it, and it won't even help the witness of the church. In a crisis like this, a crisis like a virus, like COVID-19, is the time for the church to be the church. Remember, the church is not a building. It's you. You're the church. You've been given a, given a divine responsibility to be Jesus in every interaction. The church, you, the world around us needs us. The world around us needs Christ and needs a, help, a healthy dose of grace and truth. Every meaningful conversation that we have Please, going forward, should be a balance of grace and truth. Every healthy relationship should be full of grace and truth. Every healthy church, every help, healthy follower of Jesus lives in this, this tension. Is it easy? No, it's not easy to, to live in this tension. It takes daily determination to die to your old way of self, and to live anew in Christ every day. Look, all throughout history, for centuries, for some 2,000 years since the church was born, Christians have been known for their amazing display of grace and truth amid controversy, amid crisis, amid plague, amid war. We have been the ones that show this grace and show this love. And we are the ones who are taking ourselves out in, and into the world as the very hands and feet of Christ. That's what we should be known for. We haven't always done it perfectly. We have a history sometimes of screwing up. But in general, that's what the church has been known for and should be known for. If you're not doing those things, I want you to take some time this week, take some time today to reflect, to prayerfully look at your behavior, your actions, your words, your thoughts, and, and lay them at the foot of the cross. Ask God, God, how can you change what's going on within me? How can you help mold my perspective? Don't be that person. Don't be that person on social media. Don't be that person in, in the grocery store. Be the light of Jesus Christ. Be, in, be the light in an ever-darkening world. Church, it is time to shine. It's time to shine that light, to live in the tension of grace and truth and be the ambassador of Christ Jesus to this hurting world. We need to stand in the dividing line. Whatever uh, way we're leaning on the issue, I ask that you kind of separate yourself from those issues and stand in the dividing line and ask the Spirit of God that is within you to guide you, to help you work towards reconciliation, bringing these groups together, because what we need more than anything is unity. Let me close with some words from Paul's second letter to Corinth, 2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 21. For Christ's love compels us, 
because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So, from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. And here's the important part. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you, on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Love you guys, and have a good day.